your loneliness affect your life, Sanchez? How did my loneliness affect my life? How did my loneliness affect my life? Well, I... I didn't start feeling that I could, I didn't start feeling like I was lonely until I, until I realized that I thought I existed. And then when I thought I existed, I thought I was losing something if I, I didn't exist. And that feeling of non-existent made me very lonely. But then I realized that that part of that loneliness was out of the concept of existing. To believe that you exist is not is not real. It's not a real concept. You don't exist. You accept other people's existences which allows you to exist. And when you get to that point of not existing, the first thing that you come in contact with is loneliness, which is more like a void than it is actually a feeling. And until you realize that you're detached and start attaching yourself to something, that's the feeling of loneliness to me. It is all in an illusion. And if you can get beyond that feeling, which I haven't gotten beyond yet, That's how it affect, affects me. So I attach myself to things. So I think I exist. But I know even then I'm not existing because I have not yet been able to replace that kind of thinking with something else. It's just the purpose of your body. And I can't even think that that thinking is even possible, even though I know it is. Lost. I'm not sure loneliness is anything but a word. Lonely. say, oh, I got a good night's rest, but I don't know what a good night's rest is. It just starts the motor again, and I can't shut it off. It's, it's killing me. Sanchez, the leaves are falling. The leaves are falling. How did my loneliness affect my life? 
I loved someone very, very much once. It's really the only time I ever did. I was able to. Maybe she's the reason I can't love like that again. Maybe I'm only capable of it one time in my life. Sandra's memory is with me every day. I haven't seen her, spoken to her for over 30 years since the day I left her in New York. The day she told me it would destroy her husband if she, if she left with me. I heard she was in town for a while, so I took a chance and I got in touch with her. How are you? Well, I'm still here. Yeah, you are. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Yeah. Really. I, I just feel like discombobulated. Do you want some coffee? You know, I just started walking. What do you mean? Well, after I left New York, I, I just started walking. I, I couldn't stay there anymore. So I've been walking about 30 years. Sort of walking. So, you know, I always wanted to be a painter. But I ended up being a writer. Think of me. Remember our sweet, our sweet McGee who ran away from home? That big old fluffy love snowy and I've he's always alive because he ran away. Think of me as just being in Italy of France. Think of me as just being there. We never thought of him as gone. He was just somewhere. I'll just be somewhere. Yeah, but... And baby? Darling? Seek comfort in other arms. <laughs> oh, Susanna? No. Gabriella? Please. Monique? Please. Do you remember what you said to me? I do remember. What was it? I said what I have to propose All right. will excite you. Okay. And it was then that I told you that I knew who you were and that I knew your true nature and that I knew my own and that the only way I would ever marry you is if we have that kind of a relationship where we um, live our lives fully and freely and spontaneously without questions, without demands, without restraints, without boundaries. And I couldn't have done it without it. Without you being who you are. What it was, was magnificent. What it was was magical. What it was, I believe, is, was an impossibility for, certainly for anyone else that I met in my life. What it is, is magical. What it is, is magical. Maybe I can help you with it. Really? Yeah. I already have a Romeo. Uh, you don't Romeo like me? Mm, I have a better Romeo. My mentor. Oh, yeah? Let me be your mentor. I have the best mentor in the world. You certainly do. Excuse me, young man. <laughs> this lady is taken. You can't find it. Okay. Uh, it's really a green tea. Swear it's like 
but I never saw a true beauty. With my lady, with my love. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand? I wish I were a glove on that hand, that I might touch that cheek. <laughs> I'm me. <laughs> Thank God, she speaks. <laughs> Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's a Montague? It is nor a hand, nor a foot, nor an arm, nor any other part belonging to a name. Oh. What part would that be? <laughs> Shh. You know I love you. Is that obvious? <laughs> Camila's the kind of woman I love from a distance. She loves deeply and Passionately and generously. She feels perfectly moral. She's comfortable with it. What year? What year do you think it is? I think it is. Don't you remember? We had this before. We had it down in Cannes. 1980. Oh, come on, come on, come on. The good year, the good year. 61. You are so beautiful. are so beautiful and you're so beautiful in there too how's that asshole you're married to <laughs> Come on. god I can't love him. him i can't get him out of my head <laughs> God. Ready for a life just in my own. And part of that life is you. And just part of a big part of the issue. He's all right. Obviously, he has something I don't have. Here, have a little more, my dear. No, that's not. Don't go there, baby. Yeah, I think if I put a kid out, it would do any good. I'm just a big guy. I'm not in it for the money. I'm crazy. Yeah, well, I was... I'm trying whatever way I know. I'm crazy about you. Yes, but I'm not crazy enough, evidently. I don't know. What am I threatening? What am I threatening to jump off this balcony? I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. To thine own self be true and be anyone else but who I've been all these years with you and with my sweet Antonino. I see. He's a curmudgeon, he's a bum, he's a degenerate gambler. He's, he's a piece of me.
will be no others. I have no life without her. It's too late. It's gotta be something. It's gotta be something to, to, all, to, to all of this. Sun, sky, life, love, loneliness, sorrow. Something to the abandonment, the Isolation, the fear, the gotta be, gotta be something, gotta be something, something to all of it. Explore, Sanchez, explore. There is nothing else. Yeah, nothing. Explore, Sanchez. There's nothing else. I don't know why these characters don't get it. Don't blame them. It's your fault. I'm hurting for them. You're, hurt, you're hurting for yourself. Why are you such a masochist? Stop doing this. What if I'm as confused about it all when my life is over as I am now? Oh, uh, you, well, you, you will be. But maybe we can enjoy life now. Just accept the whole thing as a disastrous experiment that went bad and then try and get a few laughs out of it. I was born into a family of lost souls. Social outcasts and misfits, bound together by mutual need to somehow survive. And if there is a God, I would have to tend to think he's malevolent, he or she, because there's just so much suffering and pain in this world. And they said that God created the heavens and God created the earth and God created all the people on the earth and that is the truth. And why is he, why are so many people suffering and dying? I mean, if he went to all the trouble of creating them, why is he destroying them? Why are they being destroyed or why are they destroying themselves? And I mean, I don't know. I, I just don't know. And, uh, you know, and because of my little my um I mean the cards that I was dealt with as far as my uh, brain chemistry and whatnot I'm just like not you know I don't always function well I mean sometimes I just think the only reason I was born was just to suffer <laughs> You're not born to suffer. Nobody is. When you're embarrassed by having your family be evicted from a place, and having your dad cry and your mother be crazy, because she's getting on her knees and praying in front of all the students, 500 students at Tracy High. Your mom, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, I'll take you out of here. <laughs> you know what that does to a kid? It makes him feel very ashamed. Very ashamed, 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 ashamed. 
but by the grace of God, I can overcome it. I can overcome it by knowing that that's just the way it is. No matter what, they take your last breath away. You have this. You can change. You can do something different. My brothers and sisters were all I, I had. Our father disappeared and our mother heard voices and I did all I could before I had to leave to find a life somehow and I never returned and now only sadness and torment. My uh, oldest brother died while I was on the phone yesterday asking me to visit him. And today My sister called me to tell me my younger brother was found dead on a park bench by the sea. My sister struggles with dementia. Some are homeless on the streets. Yeah, whatever it is, if it's a, a lesson that we come here to learn, a lesson that we learn, hmm, I would say that it's a uh, Pretty, 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 pretty tough lesson. Pretty, pretty tough lesson. Pretty tough. Huh? Pretty tough lesson. Mm -hmm. For anybody, anybody. You ever thought that that when your parents passed away, like a lot of your feelings is the same way, man? Yeah, well, they did. They both, they both died the same year, man. There you go. Hey, I'm just so tired of being tired, man. I'm just so tired of being But I dig it, I dig it. It's what it it's is. It's okay, I man. It, I it, I you came it. to the right place. I dig it. Oh, I'm just so tired of being tired. You I'm came to the right place, man. I know. I don't want to be tired anymore, but it's okay. It's what I am right now. Oh, it's okay, oh, man. Yeah. It's like a deep rest, man. Oh, you, you need a deep so rest, so man. We're all going to the same place. We're all going to the same place. You just need a deep rest, man. That's what happens. You think of your kids, you think of your family, you think of, and, it, and it sticks in your craw. And no one can tell you, why, why can't I sleep? Why can't you sleep? Because you buried it all. You buried it. But here, you can let it out. And, and when you were talking earlier, how it gets, it gets God in the love of Somehow, some way, something's taken away. But, but something's given. Something's given. Well, maybe this loneliness is what we suffer is is God, or or what we call God, and, and He's waiting, just just out of reach. If that's true. Waiting for what? Death. The only life I know is now. And it's just too damn painful to endure without knowing what the hell it's all about. And if I can't know it, I don't really want it. And I think about you every now and again when I'm in a museum or I'm in an opera or, or see something that reminds me of you. And <clears throat> And I write a lot. So I lived on a farm. I lived on a farm myself. I lived Where? in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma? Yeah, I lived on 80 acres. Some girl took me in. Her name was Zeta, I swear. She was an old 60s freak, you know? She had long hair. We had dogs and cats and chickens and turkeys and... Oh, God, that's great. Patience. That was the name of the farm. We called it Patience. And, uh... It's really the, one of the best times of my life. Really? It's great. You'll love it. You'll children? Love it. Any children? No, no, never any children. A lot of dogs, a lot of puppies. Yeah. With no children. I couldn't figure out. I couldn't figure out how I could hold on to children if I couldn't hold on to myself. So um, I kind of had to let that one go. How about you? You're gonna love this.
I give it like four minutes. Oklahoma. Alabama. But Nebraska. I really, yeah, Nebraska. Well, Kansas. You, I don't know if you I remember. I spent time in Kansas. Well, you know I was born and raised in Kansas. Born and raised? Yes. Salina? No, Greensburg, where the tornado came. Hold on, stay right there. I want to show you. I something. got a question to ask you. That's really important. You come back. Okay. I got a little bit of question to ask you. I always wanted to show you this. And oh my God! Grandpa and Grandma. Oh yeah. 1920. That's my daddy. Oh, oh, that's your dad. And it's seven years old. And that's my grandpa and my grandma and two hired men. And they're harvesting the wheat. And see the wheat's coming out into the wagon my grandma has. Was this in western Kansas? This is right in the, no, it's in the southern part. But in Greensburg, it's near Dodge City. OK. I was in Dodge City. 40 miles from Dodge City. I may have been there. How come you never told me about Kansas? Well, we didn't well, talk about that. Well, I, I, we couldn't talk about too much. We had paintings and coffee to talk about. I know, and I wasn't into Kansas then. I wanted to get away from Kansas. Now I want to go back. I can't stop. I just can't stop. I am not going to cry. Silence abuses my words as feelings shout to me. How does one begin from nothingness when we shared such depth, when passion stirred and love was birthed in our eyes and fingertips, bringing me back running blind and breathless, a window softly glowing with green, electric with anticipation, flowers that burst from your chest with love, desire, and the frustration of not being able to fully express the miraculous pounding. A single rose, smoothed of thorns and prickles, a checkered dance floor, cheeks touching, melting into mouths, bellies taut with desire, impossible to swallow without sharing, a bed where I learned to be a woman, where a stolen Moments became hours, became days of sweet abandon and discovery. We loved in the possibility of everything. I can't give you that moment again, nor can I steal it away. It's ours, defined by our dreams and our fears. It's unique, its essence is of us. It's beauty will live within our cells in a place whole and complete. Rare were the juices that pulsed through our veins. Sweet were the kisses of truth. And once again, we stand in possibility. I want to touch you as if I've never known your skin, your mouth, your piercing eyes, as if we only just met. I want to feel your longing and you to feel mine. Feel the life within us, filled with unsullied abandon. Not with what was or what might have been. Not with questions sucked from the quagmire of doubt and unforgiving past, but from fresh moments we discover in the newness of now. I tingle with thoughts of you and surrender to not knowing anything and having it be perfect, to not understanding, to not questioning, to not expecting. What I have to offer you, as always, is only a feeling that never quite goes away. Anger, sadness, frustration, jealousy, distance, time, even resignation have all played their part in our separations, but love never betrayed us, only ignorance and our self-preserving rituals. This separation, my darling, is no different. It's merely space and the timeless destiny of our eternal love. Hello, my Antonino. Forever hello, and never goodbye. You know, as I told you, I, I, I engage people, and, and sometimes, sometimes, 
sometimes I imagine them, and there's a good chance, there's a real good chance here that, that I could be imagining you. I look at people, you know, I don't even know if they're there. I, 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 sometimes I, I, sometimes I just think, I imagine them. And then they're there, and <laughs> then they're gone. But that's... Well, when you imagine them, what are they like? I mean, you know, oh, they're different. Every one of them is different. But, you know, the real thing is, is that I suppose if there's a real thing, is that they're really about me. You know, you know, they're a reflection of what I think and what I've learned and all that stuff, and I, I just try to gather it up because it's the best I can do. And then you write about it? Write about it, think about it. But, you know, I think, listen, I'm hoping, maybe hope, <clears throat> maybe by observing them, I can get some inclination on what I'm about. I like Lucky Louie in the fourth at Belmont. Can you put maybe a C note on it for me? Yeah, I know, I know, I know, but listen, I'll take care of it later. But, you know, Lucky Louie's gonna be <laughs> gonna be lucky for me. <laughs> okay, all right. Talk to you later. Bye. Hey, Antonio. Remember me? I'm Jimmy Sanchez's friend. Oh yeah, 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 Sanchez. <laughs> yeah. I was Sanchez anyway. I got to tell you, I, I really think he's crazy. <laughs> I mean, really. He wants me to come out here and, and make friends with all the homeless people I meet. He says their loneliness is too painful for any human to have to suffer. Yeah, well, that sounds like Sanchez. He's got a problem with loneliness himself. How about you? How you doing? I don't understand it. You know, I just want to be an actor, you know? I thought Sanchez could help me meet people. The kind of people he wants me to meet, they got more problems than I got. I mean, look at you. You're married and you, you got all these mistresses. Well, I have no answer for either one of us to satisfy that. I guess we're all looking for that some sort of elusive something, right? Yeah. I think I see my lady love coming there. Uh... <laughs> well, you see, there you go. <laughs> Bona Fortuna, my good friend. He was the kind of man I used to envy. He loved every woman like I loved every woman, and they loved him like I'd like to be loved. Sanchez, I spent my whole life taking care of other people. To the point where there's nothing left. I don't think you can help it. I need to make some changes. I don't think I can do this anymore. Why not? I just can't do it anymore. <laughs> you remember you said the same thing about 10 years ago, huh? I just, I just. Don't say anything. I want you to understand. And I just need to do it clean and I just need to do it for real. And, and I need you to understand. I understand. All right. I'm glad you do. I do understand. Good. It'll make you happy. Yes. It'll make you happy. That's what makes me happy. Anything to make you happy. I have an opportunity to have a whole new chapter here, and I can feel it, and I feel excited about it. Well, good. You should. And you shouldn't feel bad about it. You know, I wish the best for you. Always have. You still want to have lunch? I'm sort of taking my appetite away a little bit, but uh, I, know. I think it'll come back. I just want to breathe in this nice ocean air. Something very relaxing about the ocean.